we are going to play a video of a top person in Guyana, an influencer who is giving us some details about the corruption in the Guyana police force and the corruption with our leaders and how this corruption is linked from head to toe with the leaders them in Guyana. You need to hear this person explain Mohamed Jagmohan, the vice president and Ekin situation. Viewers and subscribers, welcome to Guyanese News where we discuss news about Guyana. If you're new to this YouTube channel and you want breaking, trending Guyanese content, smash the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section concerning this video about the corruption that is taking place in beautiful Guyana. Let's get this video started. And listen to this carefully. Businessman Barry Dataram, who is before the courts on a major drug trafficking charge, is clearing his mind through his throat in an exclusive interview with HGP Nightly News. Dataram wants the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit Kanu investigated, alleging that the same Kanu returns drugs seized from drug lords back on the streets. Operation Kanu, them is the most corrupted, rogue, security force in this country. They're the biggest drug dealer this country have. The same drugs that they steal, that, that they seize, half of it goes back on the, in the street. How you know this? In cause they sell it to my friends them. Mm. And I got friends and they know the these things, you know what I mean? Mm. I know. Dataram says he knows the operations of Kanu inside out and is crying foul since he alleges that the very corrupt officers appear in court to offer evidence against persons charged for drug trafficking. He made reference to the recent cocaine bust at his diamond home, alleging that proceeds from that bust are already back on the streets. They, they put it back on the street. The same one they find where they claim they're down there on the street already. That they, that they I show sure, about sure, thirty or forty percent up on the road. Mm. Yeah. And now this is the same people them going and testify against me in court. That Ramzo is not running from the fact that he too deals with cocaine. Authorities have long accused you mm. of being a drug lord. Yeah. Are you a drug lord? Yeah, I do drugs. I won't say that. I won't say a lie. I never been convicted or nothing. They've never caught you with anything, really? No. But I know what's going on with the streets. I know what's going on with Kanu. But them is my enemy. And I got to know how, what, what is going on with just like how they got things on me. Just like that, I got things on them too. And all these things I keep on safe. Guyana and the United States in December of 2015 agreed that anti-narcotics agents would undergo lie detection tests and other advanced screening methods over the next five years now that the Drug Enforcement Administration DEA has established a permanent presence in Guyana. During the tenure of former President Barra Jagdeo, some Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit employees had failed their polygraph tests and it was Mr. Jagdeo who was quoted as saying that his government would have terminated their services and added that his administration had been prepared for any ensuing legal battle. Some of those officers are still on the job. They got to do this, the testing, what they do, the lie detector test, they got to run it back on them. They gotta, they gotta, they gotta investigate these people. That Ram says he challenges any Kanu official to take him up on the allegations leveled, since according to that Ram, the evidence is deep. Travis Chase, HGP Nightly News. This is uh, this is um, not something recent, as you would, re would have recognized. Um, this is Barry Dataram, the same man who went to the U.S. He's a U.S. citizen, you know, and he was convicted, as we they say there. For drug trafficking and um he had uh, counted the information circulating his passport that expired and the man went to the um embassy in guyana there was a warrant out for him in the u.s federal warrant i understand he went to the u.s embassy in georgetown had his passport renewed and traveled to the united states on his arrival of course he was picked up by the fed the feds and this is a man who recently was sentenced to time served. Listen to this carefully. He was sentenced to time served. 
In other words, whatever time you did on remand and they had him there, that is the time. So he's free. He's free. And interestingly, the, the, the matter or the file with all the information is still sealed. And aspects of some other information that they released was redacted. In other words, they blacked it out. They blacked out. So when you just, you just tell you they get a preponderance of evidence? They know what they're talking about. You think Barry Dattara was sentenced to time served because he did not provide the U.S. with the information that they wanted? And as I've said, they're talking about investigation. This is not now this allegation was made. Now, did they do any investigation? The man is indicting Kanu, the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit, with being involved in drug trafficking. That is what the allegation is. We don't know that it is true. Sometimes he's bitter, you say them is the enemy. So he's bitter and perhaps he's making these allegations. But any responsible set of people, any responsible government, would have had that investigation properly, that, that allegation properly investigated, properly investigated. And then you talk, I'm going to bring in Mr. Tillman after this. When you talk about lie detector test, polygraph, I remember some years ago during the coalition, they did polygraph tests and a lot of senior officers who are still in the system now, in very, very senior positions. And they fail. They fail the test, the polygraph test. I had seen that report some time ago of all them who failed the polygraph test. And as them, the, the boys just say on the road, their man still live out. And you, you think they, um, they, they now are, are, have become saints? You think they have become saints? Or whatever reason they fail, you think those reasons still exist? They fail the polygraph. And they are still around in very, very senior positions in the Guyana police force. And remember the say, old people say, Dago a suck head, not stop. Dago a suck head. In other words, let me break it down for people who might not understand the Creoles. They're saying that if a person is accustomed to doing something, they are not going to stop. They might have a pause, but they are going to go. It comes instinctive to them. They're going to continue to do that. The reason why that Duram case came up back to the Guyanese public is because of Team Mohammed who gets sanctioned. That Tehran was arrested after he touched down in America. And the Fed started to investigate and started to interrogate that Tehran. And he started to sing the same way he was singing in Guyana with Travis Chase interview. He tell the FBI more things. And a lot of names came up. Team Mohammed was one of those names allegedly. And that is one of the reasons the sanction passed. And the vice president, they asked if the feds to share more information with the Guyanese authorities to who is the snitch, how they go about to snatching up this person, how they know Mohammed owes so much money. Those are some of the questions the government of Guyana is trying to get from the feds. But people are saying the feds is not going to give Guyanese authorities those information because that is inside knowledge. We don't know what is going to happen. So right now, Dr. Ram calling up a lot of people name to the FBI. So Caesar even get arrest when he visit FBI. When he visit America, he got arrest. Because Dr. Ram calling up who and who is a part of the big ring. So this thing that is going on in Guyana is the tip of the iceberg. A lot more thing is going to take place. We are just waiting to see what is going to be the outcome. Remember, this is Guyanese news. If you want more breaking, trending Guyanese content, smash the subscribe button. So right now, people, what is going on? That Tehran might be released because time served. And why you get time served is because you do a plea deal. And who and who name came up in that plea deal? And those are the people that Theresa May, the permanent secretary, if that is our right name, she gets sanctioned. And a lot of more people and the vice president wants some information just leave a comment in the comment section